Hi, Internet. It's me again, sitting here, uh, just uh, right in front of my my Mesa boogies, just hanging out and uh, having a smoke. I actually told a cold one. And I'm just saying tonight, cheers to all of my friends and viewers, because all my viewers are my friends. And I'd like to thank for everybody who subscribed uh, to this channel. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm having re really a lot of fun lately doing this whole YouTube thing. Um, the whole Rickenbacker build and, uh, you know, the Rickenbacker sucks. The Rickenbacker sucks video has got quite a few, I mean, for me, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a nobody YouTuber. I'm a mosquito sitting on an elephant's ass. Um, if YouTube is an elephant, I am a mosquito sitting on its ass. But it's so great that I've been getting such a really good response um, to all these videos. I, I think I've only gotten thumbs down on the Rickenbacker Sucks video. Every other video has been 100% positive feedback. Even though I get one or two likes, that's fine. They're all 100% positive. And that's great. Um, I'm really having... Uh, uh, you know, a, a fun time doing this, like I said. And tonight, I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to some of the comments I'm getting from y'all. And uh, you know, I, I I respond to the comments um, as they come in usually, and I try I try you know I try to stay up with them as as soon as possible, get to them as soon as possible because um, you know obviously I get called away from home. I'm not at my computer. I gotta go you know off to do a show, or um, you know I I go away to one of my friends' places, you know, in, in Vermont or, you know, you know, Western New York or whatever to go do some rehearsal recording for a couple days. So I'm away from my community. I, but I try to get back as quickly as possible with the personal response to each comment. And I really li like to thank you for giving me the comments. So I'm going to read a couple of them for you right now, okay? Um, I'll start with the last one. Three hours ago, Base Hiroshima Nick. Hi, Base Hiroshima Nick. It says, Robert Graham, thanks for this info. I was just looking at these bridges yesterday. I was thinking about getting from, from my Rickenbacker base. The eyeglass and the speculum comments cracked me up. And he's talking about uh, my my latest video. That That's up. There's one come. There's one going to drop any minute now. Because I'm dropping these just two days apart. Because I want to just move on from the Rickenbacker. Um, and, you know, I'm going to get to some other content coming up. There's going to probably be one or two more videos. I'm going to Germany, actually, next week. And um, I'm going to cut out to... Co I'm covering the uh, Music Messer. It's like the NAM show, but it's like the biggest one in the world. It's actually... This year, it's bigger than a NAM show, I believe. I've been told. Um, so I'm going to... I'm flying to Frankfurt, Germany on Monday to go cover that for a few days. And I should be back by the end of the week. So expect a lot of content from um, the, the Music Master Show. I mean, everybody's going to be there. And when I say everybody, I mean pretty much everybody in the entire world. So that's going to be cool. But anyway, um, Nick, Nick, uh, you know, wanted to... He, the, the eyeglass comment is... they The eyeglasses, you know, the brown... Those brown ones are my bifocals, and I do need them when, you know, I'm like looking up at the Karen and looking down to see something... Uh, I, and they are, I call them birth control glasses because that's what we called them in the army. They were the same kind of looking thing. And uh, really, you're never going to get wa laid wearing them. The speculum, I actually didn't have that sitting on my workbench, guys. I, I, I went to my my costume box. You know, I got my white lab coat and stuff because I, I go usually for Halloween as some kind of doctor. And uh, I went and dug it out and I put it on the table just to make that joke. I got this so I can get their head out of their ass. So the guys at Hipshot, by the way, are freaking great. I called them this morning, and I spoke with Oscar there, and I, I talked to him about the problems I'm having, so, um, and, and we're, and we're going to get to that in, in another comment here, so, I got, got Gray, G-R-Y-Z-W, Gray Zoo, it says, I've read some, a few comments here and there before that those screws were flimsy, some people wrote, the threads for height adjustment screws can strip out, and the saddles can drop down under spring, string spring, <laughs> Quick, take two. String pressure. Okay, first day with the new mouth. Um, and yes, I, I know that, Grezu. That actually happened to me live on stage at, um, at, 
Brewery Army Gang, we were opening for Puddles the Clown, and I know that sounds really messed up, but he was on America's Got Talent, and it was a frigging great show. So, but yeah, that's what happened. So I immediately had to put the, the Rick down, grab the Music Man, and of course, Music Man's my go-to bass, never been modified, and it's, you know, I, I mean, I, I pretty much keep that thing in my car, because it's always with me. That's the one I use the most. Little secret. Anyway, so, um... The one I bought, fortunately, had no problem with the screws. Good for you. Good for you, Grezu. Um, but I used a better safe than sorry approach. Short, tight-fitting wrench so it doesn't wobble. Right. It's a 1 wrench. And I actually mentioned that to the guy when uh, I was talking to a hip shot this morning on the phone while my kid was in the bank, sitting in my car. I gave him a call on my cell phone. And um, he said, he said, oh, did it come with the wrong size wrench? And I was like, besides that, it, I said, it's a 1 wrench. I got the right size wrench. I mean, I've got lots of sets of Allen wrenches. I've got every size Allen wrench you can imagine, metric, SAE, whatever. And I said, but yeah, I said they stripped out. And the one on the E string just wouldn't go either way. So here's the deal. And when I get back from Germany, the following Monday, not next Monday, because next Monday I'll be on an airplane, the Monday after, I'm going to go out to Interlock in New York, because it's about two hours from here. And I'm going to, um, he said I could get a little tour and maybe shoot a little video. And I'm going to actually have my editor from um, from theaudiomagazine.com uh, give give the guy from Hipshot a call because he my editor met him at, I mean, hipshot.com, from Hipshot, uh, a call or send him an email just to, you know, uh, make it official. Because I really, I really want to do, after I do the articles that I have to write for the Music Message Show, and the Music Message Show is going to be great, by the way. That's going to be some good content, like I said. Um, and I'm videotaping the whole thing. I mean, I'm going to just hit record on my camera when I get there in the morning and, and hit stop when I get to my hotel and take my pants off and go to sleep. Um, so that's going to be great content. But I'm going to try and do some videos from HipShot, which I think is going to be really freaking cool. Um, so anyway, I won't, I, won't, I won't jump into that, but I talked to him. I'm going to... He's not going to even... What, what uh, Grazy said was... Uh, well, uh, adjusting screw. Okay, I contacted him about the problem. I did see if they'll send you a saddle. I'm going out. He wanted to send me a saddle. They're great. Let me tell you, Hipshot's great customers. Absolutely fabulous customer service. Okay, so number one in my opinion. I mean, they they answered a. They're they're big enough to be effective, but they're they're small enough to actually give a shit. You know, which is so cool about them. And that's what you know what when they're wrong, they promptly admit it. And as far as the big book of AA. You know, the 12 steps go. That's like one of the most important steps. And that's one thing in my life that I live by. When I'm wrong, I promptly admit it. Hey, you know, yep, I'm wrong. I'm an asshole or whatever. I, My goof, sorry. And you make amends. So these guys are, are really, he was like, yeah, I'll send you another saddle, like right now. And I said, how about this? Let me come out. I, I want to show you, you know, we can work on some R&D things. So it's really cool. Anyway, so uh, if not, you can always buy a replacement saddle for $10. Like I said, they were going to send me one for free. I think these Rick Bridges use their A-style bridge shells. I don't know. I haven't spent that much time. I, I've seen I've seen their online thing, so whatever. It's only the base plate that was made specific to a Rick. Yes, absolutely true. Yep. So, Grazu, I dig you. I love I love your comments, man. You're fantastic. Um, next, I got Base Hiroshima Nick. It says, Robert Graham, I somehow came across your video. I enjoyed it. I'm also a Rick and Backer use it. So, I really could relate. To all you talked about, very interesting. You mentioned Brooklyn. Are you from New York? Yes, I am from New York. I live upstate New York now, but I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I went to Brooklyn Tech, which means I'm smarter than your average bear. If anybody knows what cartoon that's a reference to, leave it in the comments. Um, so anyway, yeah, and uh, like I said, I've got a lot of Rick content. There's going to be more Rick content. I'm, I'm just, I got tired of working on this thing. I got frustrated, so like I said, when I get back, I'm going to... Work on it some more. Maybe I should have done this as a live stream. Um, okay, here's one. I love this guy. D-Bag0584. I think I know who you are. I think you're using a pseudonym. But anyway. Hey, Uncle Robbie, you rule man, a man of integrity and fairness. By the way, you're the bass master. I don't know if I'm a bass master. I mean, really, there's so many people out there with much better chops than I have. I, I, I am a good player. I can play in any band. And you know what? I have to really work at it. Like, all these songs that I have to play with my cover bands, 
you know, I don't know how long it takes them to learn it, but I sit down for hours and hours and hours and I languish on these things. So, you know what, Mo uh, Rob Lapari from the Rob Lapari video, Time Keeping with Rob Lapari or whatever, um, he's like, yeah, you know, my students, they don't want to practice. Practice, it, you've got to practice. I don't care if you've been playing for 40 frigging years. You got to practice, okay? Unless you're on tour with the band and you're playing every frigging day, you know, and still in between shows, you got to practice. So, um, a man of integrity and fairness. You know what? I don't bullshit you in these videos. When I'm putting these, these bridges on, I'm not getting paid by these companies to do it. I mean, if a company wanted to send me a product to evaluate, I would, but I'm not going to kiss their ass because they sent me something. Even if they say, hey, hey, keep it for free. I'm going to evaluate it fairly and honestly because it is the integrity, you know, if there's a problem, you know, if there's a problem with it, I'm going to tell you about it. But like with the hip shot thing, if there's a problem with it, I'm going to tell you about how they rectified it. So if I get shitty customer service from somebody, I'm going to tell you, they gave me shitty customer service. And so far, hip shot, like I said, has been A number one. Anyway, so I, I love you. I love you, D-bag. Um, Dave Mustaine. I hope you get everything sorted out. I'm excited to see the final version. Dave also left me a comment. I love this one. He says, you remind me of Les Claypool. And I said, is that, is that because I'm a weird white guy, you know, who plays bass and probably smokes way too much pot? Um, anyway, Dave, thanks for the comment. Um, and I know you're the real Dave Mustaine. I know you're the real Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Because if you're not, it's really going to hurt my feelings and break my heart. But anyway, I love you too. Oh, next, next comment right here. Angelina Marie, my favorite online crush. Um... Angie's a bass player. If you guys get a chance, check out her channel. She's a really fantastic person. One of the most strong-willed women that I've ever met in my life. And fantastic, fantastic bass player. She's like she's like a cross between Getty Lee, Jocko. Um, who's the guy from, like, Level 42? Um, although she doesn't do all that slap stuff, but she's just, she's just got it done. And if I ever could be a roadie, I, I definitely want to be a roadie for her. Angelina Marie. She always leaves me great comments. And Ange, if you're watching this, thank you so much. You know, you lift my heart up every time. I love going to your channel, watching your videos. It's You are a tower of strength to me, if you remember that song. But I think they were the mission. But um, yeah, I love I love your stuff. So, you know, you just, you just hang around. I, I hope to have you as a friend for a long time. And um, you'd be Richard C., Arena. Here's another one of my favorite guys. Dude, I love this guy. Uh, I asked him what should I name it. He said Stephanie's what I call her. And yes, my friend, String Happy Bases. Richard asks the leaves the greatest comments. He's really cool. I'll probably get to a couple of them. And I, I will. I, I'm just scrolling on my... I got my laptop right here. So I'm just reading this off. D-Bag, very entertaining video. And for yeah, D-Bag, you know I love you. Richard, looking for the next one. Angelina, oh my God. Oh... Yeah, I know. I'm. I'm. I eagerly await your next videos. I've been watching all yours. I haven't been able to like leave comments, and I try to like all of them, but I forget. But yeah, I love your videos. Um, Grazu. Okay, here's the one. Also, if I re uh, recon, I'm um, not mistaken. You now have at least have at your disposal hip shot bridges with both aluminum brass, probably a stock Rick bridge stored somewhere too. If I may say so, it would be a wasted opportunity if you didn't at some point do a vid comparing all three, preferably on the same guitar. I don't think there's ever been one before or after Hip Shot Vid on YouTube in existence. Um, you know what? There, I, I look, there's not. And uh, uh, Grizu, uh, I'm going to do that eventually. Um, I'm just really sick of Rick and Backers right at this moment. And so I need I need a couple of weeks to decompress from the whole Rick and Backer thing because I mean when 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 the bass doesn't work for me after I put all this time and money and effort into it, it it it, it strains on my psyche. So I'm next couple of videos I got coming up, um, I'm gonna get back to the Rick and I'm gonna fix the tr the rods. I I've, I've gotten tools and stuff and I talked to some people about how to do it, so I'm actually gonna get back to that. And I'm gonna definitely do the hip shot one. We're gonna get the bridge work and we're getting the intonation done. Then I'm gonna fix the neck and then that bass is gonna absolutely freaking rock. Cause when the video drops tonight on YouTube, you're gonna hear that thing through these Mesa boogies and it sounds just absolutely fabulous. It really sounds good. Plays like a shitty old call of rebellion I had when I was in junior high school, but anyway. 
<clears throat> so I am going to do that. I'm actually going to take my black Rick and I'm going to go between the Rick bridge, which believe it or not, guys, I got right here in a tobacco bag. Rickenbacker 4003 Escort. And I got, I got this piece of crap right here, but I'm going to take it and put it back on. And somebody asked me about the uh, Rick screws um, not fitting. Where the hell did they go? Uh, I mean, the uh, hip shot screws not fitting, being too long. You know what? You're absolutely right. And the reason why I didn't have it on my first two bases was, and they said, why didn't you just use the original screws? I did on, on my first two bases, and I actually saved the bag of hip shot parts right here. Hasn't been opened. I swear to God, hasn't been opened. So I, I, I did throw that in here. I just really, I have the original strings that came on the Rick. I have the, as, as my one buddy called it, I'll to him, the, uh, the, the talent inhibitor. So um, I have all the original parts for both my 4003s. Um, I have the pickups for the 4003, uh, the Maple Glow one. So uh, I'm going to do that. And that's a great idea, uh, Grizu. And yeah, man, cool. As much time as, yeah, I know we don't have much time. Angelina, again, I love you. Dave Mustaine, you remind me of Les Claypool a little. Dave, you know what? You're my hero and I love you. I remember that time I met you at Lemoore's in Brooklyn when you were doing the P-Sales video and I did follow spots, so. Uh, Richard C. Astorina. Aut Autorina. Your phrase are great, Rob. Yeah. The Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I said, it's like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar growing another six inches. Who needs it? You know, anyway, huh? Oh. Uh, okay, Jeff S. This guy, I really love him. Because cause he, he totally challenged me. He said, okay, I can get behind the bridge replacement. I can get be behind taking the pickup cover off. But this whole Rickenbacker is the best, Rickenbacker sucks thing is just strange. If you're going to mod the hell out of a base, including replacing the pickup, then why buy a Rick at all? Why spend 1K plus, like, like 2K now? Okay. <clears throat> On a base you're going to tear apart and make sound different. People buy Ricks because of the... Because of the way they sound. Yes. And on, on my black one, I did that. I did that and I, it, it still pretty much sounds the same as it did with the Stockbridge. But we will figure out when I do that next video. Um, I, 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 I did mod the Maple Glow one because I needed to make it more gig friendly. Like um, a lot of gigs, like when we're playing a big show, you know, where we don't bring our own little tiny PA when we're playing in some bar or some club or someplace. When we're playing a big, like, outdoor festival type of show, um, and I use that bass, like, I, believe me, I don't use my, I use my Rick rarely if I'm not playing with Flux Capacitor. I've used it a couple of times with the Atomic Rewind and some other people. The Maple Glow one I'm talking about. The black one I use in the studio if we're looking for that sound. Um, but uh, I, I did it to make it more sound man friendly. And this, this blue one, okay, um, I, I, I got... I got just, like I said, I got the body and neck stripped on eBay and said, fuck it, I'll just put all replacement parts on. And once I get the bridge fixed, the thing's going to kick it. And once I get those rods working, and I'm going to, I know I'm going to, um, and when I, I'm, I'm going to show you how I do it. I have a plan. So, but I'm just not going to execute it yet because I don't, I, I, the thing's hanging on my, I have like an eight, eight guitar tree thing. It's like an eight guitar holder stand and it's on it right now next to my Thunderbirds and my Alembic. So, and I'm going to work on the Alembic too, so that's coming up. Um, Brett, Brett, Brent, Brent Roberts, yes. Yes. Um, instead of drilling the holes deeper, why not use the original bridge, bridge screws? I was just talking about that, Brent. Absolutely great point. Um, get shorter screws or the same width as the hip shot. Yeah, and I'm going to talk to them when I get to interlocking about it. You know, and it's, I'm, you know, I was maybe three sixteenths of an inch that I had to go in three sixteenths, a quarter, you know, not very far. I mean, you know, I don't know if I, it was on the video. I don't remember. I think I might've pre-drilled them just so you didn't see me swearing. Anyway, um, Brent, another Richard, I love you. Angelina, I love you. Um, life VIV. Okay, L-Y-F-E-V-I-V. -I, -V. I don't know if that's 515. Anyway, he says, I can see why every whammy-equipped basis utilizes a Kaler. Having to route a trim cavity in a P-Base is sacrilege. 
until major bass guitar manufacturers jump on the bandwagon. This product by Hip Shot will remain a, a rarity. Absolutely freaking true. Um, like I said, I, I made my own body. I ordered a blank, routed, you know, and then I cut it into the uh, Explorer shape, watched the video. I explained it there. Um, you know what? A Keller Equip base. Uh, I, I did my original Keller Equip base. I routed it by myself. It worked fine. Don't don't really dig on the Kellers because of the rollers. Um, but me and my friend Michael Shaw, when I go down to Brooklyn to visit him, he has his um, Fender Marcus Miller with his trim on it. And we're going to go head to head with a Keller and hip shot trim base shootout. I've already talked about him for hours. I, if you're watching this, uh, Michael Shaw, you know I love you, baby. And uh, thanks for talking to me when I'm freaking, like, all drunk and depressed because shit's not going right. I mean, this thing, I drank for two days over that Rick and Barker. Oh, my God. You should have seen me. I was a mess last week. Um, Angelina, 1973 checkerboard binding fire glow. Yeah, you know what? I hope you get another one because you would look so good playing a Rick. Um, Richard, I love Funk Me Tender. I was talking about, uh, I was talking about Randy Coven. You know, he had, he had a killer on his base and, uh, I, I, Randy Coven actually used to give one of the girls from Entourage, my, my, my guitar player for my band, Tara, when we were in high school, she uh, joined this band called Brat and then this band called Entourage, and they were great back in the 80s. Tara's a fantastic shredder guitar player. And um, her bass player, Virginia, used to take bass lessons from Randy Coven, and she actually paid him in beer. So, you know, fun, fun little fact. Um, let's see. Ah... Uh, yeah, in my comment here, hip shot bass tremolo installation. By the time all your prep work's done, actually putting the thing in takes five minutes. It's really, it's, 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 because uh, <clears throat> in order to do this, you have to order the body already routed. You don't have to route it yourself. Putting the thing in is, is a, a minute. Hip shots, I really like them. Uh, I'm going to do a video of me now setting that one up because I, I, I put, put it back together, hung it on the wall, and I, I let it set for a while. Neck is good. It's straight now. So now I just have to set the action, set the bridge bridge height. I probably have to shim the uh, heel of the neck. Anyway, that's cool. Crazy. Uh, having put a hip shot on quite a few ricks, it would seem, do you think hip shot bridges changes the tone of the rick base? If so, in what way? They made... They come... With the plate made of aluminum, fire. yeah, it doesn't doesn't really change doesn't really change the tone that much if you're if you just put the aluminum hip shot on just to replace the piece of crap. Even I said that to the guy from from uh, Interlocking today from a hip shot, uh, Oscar, really nice guy. Um, said that to him today, and he started giggling. So I guess he can't say Rick and Backer sucks. It's not nice. I can't wait to go out and see them. It's gonna be so cool. Um, Victor Silva. He was he was leaving me comments on my Andrea Ocasio Cortez has a great rack eat shit Pelosi video only political video except for how to make two packs of smokes for uh, how to make a pack of smokes for less than two bucks that was a political rant disguised as an instructional video um, but anyway you know and I, I, it, that one was a funny pol political commentary um, really and my point is why are all the beautiful ones so freaking stupid. Anyway, and AOC does have a great rack. And if you don't like that, you can eat my balls. <laughs> Richard, when you pull the trigger on that 2018, Richard Auto Arena, Richard C., I want you to do a video of it. You got to do a video of it for me. Just take your iPhone, put it out, stick it in your computer, put it up like I do, and the hell with it. D-Bag, happy birthday. Thank you. Ben Wagner, good, good video, man. Fair-minded. Alexandria is super hot. Great tits, as you said. Yes, she does. Anyway, and I know that's extremely sexist, but we're doing it in a comedic thing. I know you can't make comedy anymore. And, um, you know, probably one day, 15 years from now, when I'm running for, like, governor, you know, they're going to come say, Rob's a sexist. Well, I am. I'm, I'm sexist, misogynist, but it's all in good fun. And uh, I'm making fun of a political person. Hey, you know what they say about Donald Trump? You know what they say about freaking... Uh, I don't know, who's, a, who's another Republican that everybody hates? Well, just all of them. <laughs> Every Republican is a Nazi, pretty much. Well, I don't know. Anyway, Richard L. God, I miss this guy. Richard L. I used to talk about talk to him in, like, all my videos. But and that, that, that part of this channel is kind of done now. Um, being a fanboy of one person, you know, 
I, 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 but you know what? Without her, I, I'd never got this far. I wouldn't be going to Germany if it hadn't been for the, me starting this YouTube channel. You know, I wouldn't be writing for this magazine if I hadn't been starting for this YouTube channel. And I got these other people um, who want to re-release the Primal Scream album. You know, and they found me on the Primal Scream. Let's see. Notes from the Underground. Good in-depth video. I see the link to the album was taken down, so I put it up here. Uh, thank you. Notes from the Underground. Cool. Primal Scream Volume 1. Great albums revisited. I'm talking to the guy from, I believe they're called, uh, they're called Dive Bomb Records. And uh, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out who owns the rights to the Primal Scream album because they want to actually re-release it on Compact Disc. Little fact here, Primal Scream album was just... Ch I'll probably do another Primal Scream video. Um, I, I, the album, you can get a copy of it on vinyl for 20 bucks in mint condition. The CD was so rare, I found one in poor but playable condition, $70. I found one in good condition, $299. And I found one in, in very good condition... $399, because that CD was so rare when it came out. Nobody had a CD player. I mean, it was a rare CD. They didn't know if it was going to be. They were like, oh, the CD thing's never going to work, you know? So, But they made it only a 1,000 copies of that album on, on CD. I believe it was a 1,000. I have one, and my brother-in-law, <coughs> my brother-in-law brothers Dwight, founded at Tower Records. <coughs> he burnt me a copy of it at his job at CBS, and eventually he gave me the... The, the the real copy, so I have that. Tommy Two Tone, my buddy. Um, he, he was talking about my old Virginia homestead. He says I could only assume Aunt Dot has an autographed copy of Volume One. And what's really funny is I think he left that comment before I uh, put the I put the video up, and I said, yeah, actually, she actually does. It's still in a record collection, in almost mint condition. I don't think she ever played it. Um, a lot of my uh, relatives have that album because I gave. They actually went out and bought it to support me, which was nice of them. Richard, yeah, God, I love you. Tommy Two Tone again. What pleasure it is. No, oh, I guess, I guess he did put that comment on the Homestead video after he watched this. Still, oh man, fucking brilliant. I recorded it on a cassette and blasted in my '74 Monty with 500 watt Alpine. Yeah, you know, so many people have this, and it's really great to find these people. Um, who are so interested in this album. It, it's really cool. Um, Richard, again, I love you. Sacred White Monkey Wrencher, my main man. He's like, I have to say, this was very well recorded, mixed album. I guess this was the only one you did. It was, unfortunately. Keith died before we got a chance to do it again. Um, but it definitely stood out among others coming out that time. Excellent playing for a debut. Thanks. Anyway, look, this video is getting a really long. I gotta tell you guys, stay tuned. There's a lot of exciting crap coming up on this channel. Um, I'm gonna have a good, I mean, once I'm done with Music Messer and and going to see the uh, hip shot in, out in Interlochen, which is like, a, like I said, two hour drive from here, really right here in New York, upstate New York. Um, I'm gonna have content for quite a while. So you guys are probably gonna get get tired of, you know, watching, or you, maybe you'll love it, you know, getting, but I get really in depth with my stuff. And like I said, I shoot it, I put it up and that's it. No edits, no bullshit. You know, I'm not going to do a soundbite here and make, to make somebody look stupid, you know, especially me. So, um, what you see is what you get. And uh, if, I, if I missed you and mentioned you, I'm sorry. Um, drop it in the comments. Let me know. I love your comments. Keep them happening. And um, everybody, here's to you, my friends, my, my followers, my subscribers. And um, keep on rocking in the free world. Good night, boys and girls. Bye!